हेलो हिस्ट्री ऑप्शनल स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी डिफरेंट एंशियंट पोर्ट्स एंड आल्सो वी विल सी टू पोर्ट्स टू इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्ट्स अबाउट द कंटेंट हाउ टू डील विद द कंटेंट आल्सो इफ वी सी द इंडिया मैप दिस इज द इंडिया कोस्ट लाइन सिंस एंशियंट टाइम्स since the times of harappan time period ports played very important role in the economic condition of any kingdom you take it harappan civilization they were very good in trading activities and they traded with west asian countries also the so called modern west asian countries today iran iraq region saudi arabian region the saudi arabian peninsula and that time it was called mesopotamian civilization geography is same only names are changing from time period to time period since the time always ports played an important role in the economic growth of that particular kingdom or the civilization today we have many states which are sharing the boundary with ocean and this side bay of bengal this said bay of bengal and this said arabian sea in gujarat also we have some important ports in maharashtra also then with respect to ancient times some important ports in gujarat maharashtra and kerala we see tamil nadu andhra pradesh bengal in these areas a very important major ports are located and these ports played very significant role in the progress of the kingdoms for example during harappan time periods one if you take the lodal lodal is a significant port in indus valley civilization they had a dockyard also in that area then when it comes to post mauryan or mauryan period a place called sopara in maharashtra it is very significant port and with respect to kerala chera chera kingdom was there and in that chera kingdom one important port is there muzeris during sangam time period sangam time period is a very important stage of historical development in the south indian history chera kingdom and here madurai and madurai was the capital of pandyas pandyas maintained a port that is korkai and these ports during post mauryan time period they were so important that these were referred in the greek or roman text also so in the greek or roman references also they are there with about muziris korkai and here with respect to ap andhra pradesh masuli patnam or modern day machili patnam and in bengal there is one important port that is tamralipti you can see these ports this is the geographical location of these ports and these ports played very significant role when it comes to eastern side they traded with this side also and with respect to this they traded with this also that is how india was always integrated with the old trade so in the modern times like globalization we generally used to say after 1991 reforms india integrated fully with globalized world or the world community but it is not the case our history is giving the evidence that since the first civilization of india indus valley civilization we were always open and we were always traded with outside world and these are the important ports with respect to indian uh history optional map pointing now i will give you two important uh, when it comes to the 
two important ports when it comes to the content, how to deal with the content. For example, Tamralipti. Here, Tamralipti is located in Bengal region. Now, what dimensions you need to write? Here we have only 30 words space. 30 words and 2.5 marks. Thirty words are there, and two point five marks. If you identify, UPSC will give like the number. They may say, and it will say, ancient port, Mauryan port, Gupta's port. So ancient port, Sangam port. So whatever the name, let them give. But once you identify the geographic location of the present day state, and what are the important ancient ports during that time. You can easily answer this. And once you identify, if you identify, you will get one mark. If you identify correctly, you will get one mark. And if you write content, 30 words, you will get 1.5 mark. So you will get out of 2.5, you will easily get 2.5. It is the only place in our history where 100% marks are coming for a particular question. That is why even if you can make out of 20 questions, even if you make out of 20, 16 questions right, if you get out of 2.5, 2.5 for everything, you will get 40 marks. But in some, you may not get 2.5, 2 also, 1.5 also. Overall, 35 to 40 is easy to get. And 35 to 40 is it is like uh, 75 to 80 percent of the marks. It's very, in very rare occasions we get out of 50 marks, 75 percent, 80 percent score. That is why it is a very highly marks scoring area also. At the same time, very challenging also. That is why we need to go very systematically. You organize all the ports in one map, and here state by state. In West Bengal, what are the important? In Andhra Pradesh, in Eastern Coast, in the West Coast. So all these aspects you need to segregate properly while preparing. Now when it comes to the content, all you need 30 words only. Still while preparing, you are going to prepare on these lines. First one is location. So first you need to identify the location of it. When it comes to this Tamralipti, the state. So I will write here Tamralipti. Then when it comes to the location, what type of information we get when it comes to the location? In which state it is located? And if you remember, in which district it is located? So what is the state? What is the district? And one significant aspect with respect to location is if any particular site is located on a particular river, we should not miss that. So if there is any river, on which river that particular site is located? With respect to location dimension, you can think of these small sub-dimensions. And once you see this, this is related to geography. Now, when it comes to the history of Tamralipti, you can track from the chronological order wise. It was an important port, whether during Harappan times or later Vedic, Mahajanapadas, Mauryas, post Mauryas, Guptas. So, like that, you can think of. So, that chronological order also you can think of. Now, once you identify that, then what is the important evidence? For example, with respect to timeline. With respect to timeline, you can give during which time period this particular port is flourished. Now, when it comes to the economic angle, 
Now, you can think of with which countries these people traded. So, which regions, what are the exports, what are the imports, how this port is connected with outside world and also both domestically as well as internationally. Then, art and culture. You can also think of if there is an evidence related to art and culture, any terracotta image or any sculpture, any pottery, these things you can link with art and culture and you can have. Now you see, if you give without grammar, if you simply mention the keywords with the comma comma, 30 words, you will get very good content, you will get 2.5 out of 2.5. Here I have taken one example here, now you can see. Tamralipti. This is the location of map. This material I will provide you once you join the class and this is how our material looks. If you take Tamralipti, first you will see with respect to India in which location it is located. And with respect to which state, West Bengal, Tamluk. This is with respect to the location. Now when it comes to the geography, the exact description of the geography in which district or in which state. It is in West Bengal state. When it comes to the district, modern day, Tamluk town near Purba, Medanipur district. And when it comes to the river, it is located near the mouth of the Ganges. So location, state-wide came, district-wide came, river also came. And with respect to timeline, now during which time periods this particular port is flourished or which this port played an important role in the economic development of that particular period. For example, Tamluk is giving evidence of Chalcolithic time period. Antiquities of Chalcolithic period were found and NBPW. Chalcolithic means it's like uh, before NBPW, NBPW phase is associated with Mahajanapadas. So that means Mahajanapada time period onwards and even much before Mahajanapada time period onwards, some evidence of settlements is identified in this location. And when it comes to economy, you can see the economy with respect to trade. Now you see, it was an emporium of trade, different potteries, roulette ware, red polished ware of Roman type were discovered. What does it mean? Roman type discovered means they were trading with Roman Empire also. So Roman exports, imports were taking place from this port as well. It indicates the trade contact with Roman world. Next, transportation. When it comes to the transport, how it is connected? It was connected to Takshila by land and river. So this shows it is connecting from this location through land and through river also is connected to now you can see from west northwestern part to easternmost the trade. Now you can see this is with respect to oceans also we can trade with the west side world where on land also west world. So land route also, sea route also. So here it was connected to Takshila by land and river. It was connected with Southeast Asia by sea. Now you can see with respect to sea it is connecting through sea route. With respect to West Asia, it is connected with land route. We will give that description also. Now when it comes to the urbanization, urban elements were also discovered because NBPW phase is the second urbanization. What is the first urbanization? Indus Valley Civilization. This is the second urbanization phase. Discovery of terracotta figurines, coins, beads or semi-precious stones, etc. were discovered with respect to the urbanization phase. Now you can see how many. We all, we require only 30 words. We require only 30 words. You will get easily 30 words. Now with this mind map, you will be able to remember very effectively because our mind remember more when we see in the format of image or video format or image format. That is why I'm going to provide you the material in this format. Samralipti 
and with respect to Tamaralipti, what are the basic dimensions? You can see the map, geography, timeline, economy, society. So likewise, you can easily imagine. And moreover, this information will help you in even understanding uh, while giving the mains answer writing also. Suppose if any question related to urban elements or trading activities or international contacts with outside world, you can use the same content for this. Whenever you use the guidance of Tamralipti, you can utilize this content. This is one aspect. Let us see one more example also. West side. Now this side we have seen. Tam, this side, Tamralipti, eastern side. Let us see the west side, so, Sopara. Now this is the Sopara location. Now when it comes to the map, this is the location with respect to India map. In this location, this is located. And particularly with respect to Maharashtra, in this location, it is there. Now once we go here, now different dimensions, economy, art and culture, geography. So these are, again, these are the fundamental dimensions for any site. Geography, timeline, economy, art and culture, society. These are the very broad themes. Any answer you can fit with this particular theme. Now, geography. It is located in Thane district, Maharashtra, and it is also known as Surparaka. So, other name, if this is there, any state, and what is the district? State-wise, district-wise, and any river, and other name. Now, when it comes to the economy, you can see the trade. Trade, now you can see, Greco-Roman authors like Ptolemy and authors of Periplus mentioned it. So Periplus of Eritrean Sea, it was an important source to understand the trade with the West world. So this book gives a very important uh, information about how this part of the world and this part of the world are connected through different trading activities. That book also mentioned about Sopara. And Ptolemy also mentioned about this particular. It was an important seaport and a center of international trade. It traded with Mesopotamia, Arabia, Egypt, Eastern Africa. So this shows the connectivity between Maharashtra, Sopara, and the west side world. And when it comes to the industry, it was a center of artisanal activity, industrial activity. It manufactured swords, shoes, and other leather goods that were in great demand in the Western world. Now you can see, it is on the west side. It is connected with the Western world. Now easily you can imagine. Now once it is done, with respect to art and culture also, we have some kind of evidence. During Mauryan time period, art and culture related evidence comes. Ashoka major rock edicts. Fragments of major rock edicts of Ashoka were found in this location. Relics in a stupa were also found with respect to stupa. So these are the two dimensions related to art and culture. So this is how hardly you need 30 words. So you can give like, for if, suppose if you want to give the text. So you can give like location. Location, when it comes to the location, you give the state, district, river, whatever, but the state you mention. And once location is done, then with respect to the timeline, during which time period? Harappan time period, Mauryan time period, post-Mauryan time period, Gupta time period, you can mention. Then when it comes to the economy, during economy, in, in the economy, with respect to trade, trading activities, agriculture activities if there is, industrial activities, transportation, all these things can be given. And when it comes to the art and culture, and if there is any art and culture, religion related, literature related, inscription related, archaeological related, anything you can give. And if there is any particular specialty about the society, urbanization, urban element, potteries, those things also you can mention. And you will get 30 words, and you are giving all the important dimensions. Now, examiner, 
is forced to give 100% marks 2.5 out of 2.5. Because if you identify the correct location, identify the correct name, Sopara, Tamralipti, once identification, one mark you will get, the remaining 1.5 mark you will get. So 2.5 out of 2.5 you can easily get. So this is how map-based module is going to be. From next week onwards, we are going to start map-based module. So this is how you will get. We will use this mind mapping tool also. We will use Excel tool also. In Excel, we will use the latitude, longitude. Because when it comes to the map, identification of the exact location is a major challenge. We have to use latitude and longitude once we get the latitude longitude in Excel, we can create a map with exact location so that even minute details are sometimes what happens in map, a cluster. For example, in Chalcolithic, Neolithic settlements of Karnataka, like Muski, Brahmagiri, Kupgal, there are many sites. And if you see in the major outline, it appears like almost very close and we cannot easily differentiate which site is located exactly in which location. With Excel map, we can easily zoom it and we can identify the difference between different sites. So in that way, we can easily get the cluster area also. And if there is any particular site during in that cluster, you can pick up most important area from there and you can write the content. So Excel tool also we will use for accuracy of the map. And this image mind mapping tool also we will use for retention. And we will practice almost around 500 sites minimum. But even 500 sites also not required. Around 200 or 250 sites, if you properly manage, definitely around 14 to 15 questions you can answer. And remaining two, three questions, that depends on the more you practice and you will get more. Sometime if question paper is easy, 16, 17 questions you can get with 250 sites only. But for our safety purpose, for our systematic approach, we are going to deal around 400 important sites. And with this, your map is going to be in safe hands. So once you ensure map is safe, then it is very easy to score high score in history optional. In the history optional, main factor which either you get high score or you get low score, major factor is history. So be always be careful with the history. We are going to handle map section very carefully with these tools and techniques. So I will see you in the class. Thank you. Thank you very much.